Hey everybody, it's Ted Pedromo. Welcome to the webinar. If you have questions along the way, type them in the chat window. And I'm just gonna go through LinkedIn and show you some of the things I have found right now that are much different. Obviously there's a lot different. But I'm gonna show you some of the major changes that I have found. And literally every day there are updates to this. And I've seen actually things change right in front of my eyes while I'm teaching a class. And then they'll change back later in the day. So they're rolling out lots of changes. They're testing a lot of different features. They're replacing a lot of things. And then they're restoring a lot of things which people say they want these features back. So if you have questions, go ahead, just type them in the chat and I'll get to them along the way. Thank you, Doreen, she's on YouTube. Yeah, there's a little glitch with this new YouTube live. and webinar jam so I can't display it through webinar jam but it goes through YouTube which is actually faster there's less delay so I'm gonna just jump right in here's the new interface for everybody and I have a premium account still and I did a post a couple weeks ago about you know is it worth that or not and it's still up in the air so I'm not sure mine renewed automatically for another year and I have a very very low rate because I've had that account for, I think, seven years now. So I'm holding on to it for now, but kind of let me start here. It's nice that we can see what our profile looks like to other people, and it shows up here. But here's where the Who's Viewed Your Profile is now. This is much better than it used to be. You used to have to dig to find this. So here's people. They don't give me the graph anymore. It shows my trends. But it shows you who, what companies, and then what job titles. So here's 169 people that have viewed it with the CEO or executive director titles. 28 people, this is new, I haven't seen this one yet. This is a new one. 28 people found me through messaging, which is interesting. So I'll have to explore that more. I send a lot of messages to people. I send a message, a custom message if I invite people to connect. I send welcome messages and then I send follow up messages periodically to check in with people. So it's interesting. I would assume this messaging here is because people add you to these group conversations. And I know if you've ever been part of that, people just add you to these conversations and there'll be 50 or 75 people in this and nobody wanted to be in this conversation. So if 28 people found me, that's interesting that way. But I don't like it when people add me to a conversation without my permission. It's just really annoying. But, so here, Dan found me, we're not connected. So this is kind of interesting. It says literally every day when I log in, I find something that's new or different. So I kind of just explore it and see you know, how we can use it to generate more business. Uh, yeah, Patricia, the YouTube screen, it'll get better as the video gets there. What YouTube does, it'll just start displaying video and then it fine tunes it as the webinar goes on. It's just one of the way YouTube videos work. If you've ever uploaded them, at first it's blurry until it processes with all their servers. So now worst case, if you watch the replay, it'll be much clearer than it is. One of those things we can't control with YouTube. So let me go back to the homepage here. I'll just kind of take you through you know, a typical morning when I log into LinkedIn. This is where I see who viewed my posts. So I do, I post a lot of content here from other sources. This is something I post a lot of entrepreneur.com content. So we got 12 people viewed it already this morning. Here's one from five hours ago. We got three likes. So if you just share other people's content, it really generates a lot of interest from other people. I got 63 people viewed this, not a lot of comments yet, 38 views. So you can see how well people are responding to your content. And then here's all the activity of articles you've posted. 103 people viewed this. I noticed not much, people aren't viewing articles as much as they used to be because when they removed LinkedIn Pulse from the menu last year, it really cut down on the interaction site, even from thought leaders. 
So that's kind of frustrating from that perspective. But the good news is a lot of these articles you post can show up in Google. So if you search for certain keywords that are in your title, especially the title of your article, you can show up in Google search results. So that's the, the pro plus side of that. And basically, here's all the activity. This is kind of summary of my articles and posts. So a typical morning, what I'll do is I just kind of see, you know, OK, here's my network. That means I have some new invitations to connect. So I have eight from last night. I get anywhere from 15 to 30 invitations a day to connect. And it's just the system I use is really working well for me right now. I'm getting lots of them. So I can go through, and here's something that I did notice. So here, Steve sent me the standard invitation because there's no reply to John. So when this appears, that tells me John customized the message. Let's see if anyone else customized the message. OK, so nobody else did. Everybody else sent me the standard message. Only John customized it. And then you can click Manage All. This is that one. The new LinkedIn interface, it shows you a clean look. And you have to do a lot more clicking to get expanded features, which it's good and it's bad. You know, the good news is the interface is cleaner overall. But to really dig into things, sometimes you have to click three and four times to get there. So basically, if I want to send a message to Steve and say, you know, I noticed you sent me an invitation to connect, why would you want to connect with me? Or why do, why do you think we should connect? And I don't do that. A lot of LinkedIn experts teach that. They want people to only, they only want to connect with people they have a reason to connect with. I'm more open. I go with the theory of maybe Steve may not be a perfect fit for my network, but maybe someone in his network is. So we have 117 mutual connections. So I would accept his invitation because you know we have a lot in common already. And here I can see those mutual connections. So you know, I know some of these people personally. So you know, that's somebody. This is great. He looks like he's local. Somebody I could connect with. So I would accept his invitation. So here I can see John's message. I can see the custom message he sent to me. Well, that's interesting. It doesn't show me the, the original message. <laughs> so let's go back. This is one of the frustrating things. And they're working these issues out as they come across and people complain about them. But here, here we go. I'd like to connect with you here on Facebook. And then here's his Facebook connection. So it shows you the message when you click on that. And I can reply to him if I want to, or I could just accept it. I don't always connect with people on Facebook that I connect with on LinkedIn. I really keep Facebook more personal. I do some business things over there, and I get good results. But I prefer to really keep, keep them a little separated. I used to keep them totally separate. But nowadays, I'm kind of overlapping some or not. But I would check John out, get to know him first before connecting on Facebook. That's why I would go through my invitations here. I would accept the invitations, and then I send them my welcome message. And I have a standard message that I've been using, and I, I update it every couple months. I just welcome people to my network, offer to introduce them to someone if they need an introduction, and then I just ask them a question. Just for fun, tell me something interesting about yourself or your business. And anywhere from 10 to 30% of the time, go through periods where a lot of people respond and then some people you know, goes people aren't responding as much recently so i need to change that message that they'll tell me something interesting about themselves which starts a conversation and lets us get to know each other then i drive them to my website my linkedin friends page where they can learn more about me let's see there it is so does anyone else do that? Drive them to your website? Because then what I can do, they get to know me more over here. Let them know how I can help them. They can sign up, you know, download my magazine. 
they can go to my social selling TV channel. So it talks about me, how I can help them. And then they can also download a strategy guide based on my book, or they can get a free LinkedIn course. And then as they leave the page, I offer the course again. And I get a lot of people sign up for that. So it's a really good thing to do is get people off LinkedIn into my sales funnel. So let me go to the next step. So the next thing, they have this jobs. So they're really pushing this. As part of my premium account, I get this recruiter. It's called Recruiter Lite. So I don't really post a lot of jobs because I don't hire a lot of people. I have a small business. But they've lumped it in with this business, grandfathered in business premium account that I have. And they also have, I can post a job here. And I noticed this area over here changes daily almost. Sometimes there's sales navigator here because I have sales navigator. In it. So it's, I haven't figured out the pattern yet, but it's kind of interesting to see how it's changing and sometimes literally in front of my eyes. Here's another thing they've done is actually remember how hard it used to be to find how many connections you had. They used to tell you and then they kind of hit it and you'd have to do some digging to find out how many connections you have. So this is a great way to just see your whole network right here. They make it much easier now than it used to be. And then it's, you can sort it by recently added first name or last name. This is how I reach out to people and send them the custom messages. So I know that I've accepted maybe 10 invitations in a session here. And I'll cut and paste. I have used Text Expander on the Mac. So I can cut and paste the messages. And as I update the message, I just, a couple of keystrokes, I can paste that in there. Next thing I'll do is go through my messages. And a lot of times I have my assistant go through because I lose a lot of messages with this new layout. I really don't like the way it lumps in your sent messages with your inbox. So you can sort by unread. So what I'll usually do is go to start with the unread messages. So these are conversations I'm having with people. I spend anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes a day on average on LinkedIn, sometimes more. Sometimes I'll get on two or three times a day. I just kind of check the messages. So here are some people who are interested in, you know, having a brief conversation. Somebody I've been talking to about up updating his profile. So here, there's just a lot of unread conversations. So I'll scan through that and also have my assistant go through because sometimes literally I'll have people wanting to set up calls with me to talk about LinkedIn or helping them with lead generation. Then I'll miss them. So my assistant will catch that as she scrolls through. The messaging is very powerful. I'm finding if you send nice short messages to people, you get a really good response most of the time. Don't send long messages with you know thousands of words because people won't read it all. You want to get their attention, start a conversation, and go from there. Next thing I'll do is just go through my notifications. So this is all, you know, this was all here before, but they've moved it around. Some have made it easier to find, some are harder to find, and sometimes you feel like you're on a little treasure hunt, digging deep into the interface to figure out how things work. So I just said, these are posts that I've made and who's viewed my posts. So 12 people with salesperson title, 64 views, New York City. So I used to tell you exactly who did it, which was frustrating. And then this kind of came and went. Now it looks like it's gone again where I could see. Let's look at this post. You used to be able to click on it and see exactly who liked it. It looks like now that's missing again, which is kind of frustrating. <laughs> Literally every day, things are coming and going. But you used to say, here, we got four likes. Let's try this. OK, here we go. Here are the people that liked it. 
and people, if they comment and share it, you can reach out to these people. So this is really good to see, you know, who's interested in your content. And if you notice the same person resonating with certain kinds of content, you can reach out to them and thank them for, you know, liking and commenting and sharing your content. I just use LinkedIn really to start conversations with people because when you're selling your products and services, it all starts with conversations that leads to people getting to know, like, and trust you, which turn into business. I see, yeah, Deborah, you got to watch it from YouTube. There's a little bug. So if you click on that, you can, it'll open a separate window. And you can see this broadcast live on YouTube. It's actually much, it's not, it's, it's in sync a lot more. It's not that 15 to 30 second delay. And if you get stuck and this stops broadcasting, refresh your screen, that's one of the biggest things you can do. It's kind of like when you have to reboot your computer with live broadcasts like this. Just refresh your screen, it'll reconnect most of the time. So let's go back here to notifications. So I just kind of scroll through this. I'm in a LinkedIn summit with a lot of these people, so we're all promoting each other. It's from Adele McClay. I'll be sending out some messages about that because the replays will be starting to show up next week. It's a lot of great LinkedIn experts. You did a really good job with this. So it just kind of tells you, here's where you do the happy birthdays. This works really well. We have cut and paste messages there too. We, you just customize and say, like here, hi Jim. And you say a little happy birthday thing. And if you ask them a question like, did you do anything exciting for your birthday? They'll reply a lot of times, which starts conversations. So they can, you have to dig a little bit for this now because it used to be under just my network. You'd see all this. So now you have to go to notifications and scroll through. What would be nice if you could filter these. You may see like birthdays or job changes. So here somebody started a new job and you can say congratulations or you can like it. So it's all those little interactions only take a couple seconds a day, but they get people back on your radar or get you get on their radar. Let's say, oh yeah, I need to reach out to Ted because I need to update my LinkedIn profile. So next over here, this is where we do your settings in privacy. Here's the premium accounts. And I have Sales Navigator. I basically have a premium account and Sales Navigator. With both of those now, you get access to LinkedIn Learning, which used to be a separate charge of $30 a month. So with any business premium account, you get access to that too. That's one of the benefits. So also here, I won't go deep into this. There's all of your privacy settings. It actually, this is a much cleaner look than it used to be. But basically, if you want to add email addresses or phone numbers to your account, basically managing your account. And then here's all your privacy settings. So, you know, all these settings were there. This seems to be a much cleaner look than it used to be. So it's a lot easier. Things like advertising preferences, you should go in. Can use cookies and then they can actually they used to be able to use your profile picture in ads if you told them if you didn't say you, you didn't want them to and then sharing data with third parties so i always turn those things off and then here's your communication prefer preferences so if you join a lot of groups and you get a lot of messages from the groups you can turn that off so i can get group changes group notifications if you want to join a new group or choose what to notify when you join a group. I don't do a whole lot in groups these days. It's just I get enough results without participating in groups. But, you know, the, the groups work really well still. So let's go back here. And if anybody has any specific questions, you know, like where did whatever go, we can 
try to find it here. Oh yeah, and here's where you find company pages that you manage for other people, or if you're doing ads, you would do this under advertising is over here now. Here's LinkedIn Learning, Sales Navigator, LinkedIn Groups. LinkedIn Lookup, there's a new one, this just appeared recently. It's a salary guide. So if you're looking for a new job, you can compare salaries. One thing I heard this week, Microsoft announced there's gonna be 34 products of LinkedIn and Microsoft that may be integrated over the next year or so. So that's interesting. So here you can do, here's, you know, basically different jobs. Software engineer in San Francisco, 120K. You can dig into that and look and see. I'll see what premium I get that now. So if you're a software engineer in San Francisco, here it tells you what the median is. It's just crazy. Oh, here's breaks it down. This is new. I just noticed this last week. So if you are looking to hire people for your company or you're looking for a job yourself, this will give you a good idea what the going rates are. So here, staff software engineer, $170,000. Wow, the median is $244,000. So that's a nice new tool from LinkedIn. Does anyone hire for their company and use LinkedIn for it? So here is, we'll just go through these and show you. Sales Navigator. This is a premium account. And one of the things they're doing with the advanced search, actually I'll show you the examples. I have a free account. I'll show you the different searches. But with Sales Navigator, you get a lot more search fields as you're doing, they call it lead builder here now. And here's all the different fields. And what they've done on the basic LinkedIn, they've eliminated a lot of these. So you can really get some detailed searches going on in Sales Navigator. But up here, notice the search box is much smaller than it used to be. So say I'm looking for a business development person. See, it starts with just a basic search, and then all these other fields start popping up. So here's jobs. I can search just people. And that's something that just popped up yesterday is you can save these again, the searches. That was taken away, and a lot of people complained. So they put that back in the free account and the premium account. So you really do your searches this way, but what's frustrating is now, notice there's just level of connections, keywords, locations. I can't search by different job titles unless it's just right in the search itself. You can't search for industry, or you can use industries, but company size is missing now. So a lot of fields that are in Sales Navigator that you don't get, even with a premium account. So company type, profile language, all these different extra fields are only in Sales Navigator now. And here I'll show you, this is a free account. It's my brother-in-law's account that I use for testing. So if he's looking for project manager, So over here, he's got the same search fields I do with a premium account. Then it tells me, do you want to better focus your search? Add nine other fields for premium. But I don't see those nine other fields in my dashboard. So I'm kind of frustrated with that. I'm like, well, where do they go? He told me it nine more in addition to this. But so I hope that's something they'll fix. But since I use Sales Navigator primarily, 
it's not a big deal for me, but they shouldn't tell you that you can get nine more search fields and they don't give them to you. So that's the sales navigator. LinkedIn Learning used to be lynda.com. Last year they rolled that in and called it LinkedIn Learning. They rebranded it. It's the same content. But with your premium accounts, you can take all these classes. And LinkedIn's really, they did a good, good presentation last year. They talked about the skills for our jobs that we're using right now will be obsolete within five years. And something like 25% all jobs will be automated by 2020. So just three years from now, 25% of the existing jobs out there will be replaced by automation. So we've always got to be honing our skills and learning something new and keeping up with what's what's working. So there's you know, thousands of classes on here. And then we have groups. So here's my most active groups. They changed this layout last year and rolled it into the new interface. So you can kind of scan through. I don't spend a lot of time in groups, like I said. I just I get enough traction just you know connecting with people and starting conversations. But you can use groups to start those conversations too. There's 383 new conversations today on social media marketing. So when I used to do the groups, I would go in here. So Michael runs this group. So he's got 105 likes, 30 comments. I look at the comments and see. So he's just promoting a webinar and people are asking about the webinar. But here, nobody's liked or comment. You don't get a lot of likes and comments. These new conversations are basically people posting content in the groups so they count that as a conversation even though it's a monologue right now because nobody is reading this i know a lot of other linkedin experts they highly recommend you blast articles to all your groups every day which i don't think that's valuable it gets your name maybe in front of people but if people i notice certain people will post like maybe pat posted this here i can look at his profile and see that he posted the same article in 20 or 30 groups so he's not trying to interact with people he's just trying to blast his name in front of as many people as possible you now for some people that works but i prefer to really take time and build strong relationships with a few people i my approach is quality over quantity maybe quality quantity is better for your business it's up to you so you have to really decide that and what you know how you use linkedin but there's so many ways to make LinkedIn work for you, and I've found a way that works really well for me, so I'm sticking with it for now. What else? We have Profinder is something they started. I was in the beta program. I guess it was two years ago they started it. And here, if I'm looking for maybe a career coach, like here's one that's advertised. There's over 1,400 people that are posting here. So I logged in and I have not had any luck getting projects from this. You can actually ask for service providers. You know, if I need someone to do copywriting for me or I need an accountant, I can search here. And what happens is people will send. So here are three proposals. What happens is they only take five proposals. They don't notify you. Like the last one I got was four months ago. So they don't send a whole lot. I don't think this is working as well as they wanted it to. But. So here, it was really frustrating because they want you to do, okay, so there's no request. They want you to give a proposal, like this. they'll say advertising consulting, and they don't give a lot of details on the project, and you're supposed to give a hourly rate or a fixed price for the project. We know very little about the project. And some of my, responded to is ongoing marketing support and it didn't say how long it didn't say what their budget was they wanted you to give numbers so i tested high numbers i tested really low numbers 
and I got one person that actually reached out to me and it was about promoting their new book to libraries. Like, well, I've never really done book promotion to libraries specifically. So he went off and found somebody else. But, you know, it's a great idea for this. It's free. But the execution is not that good for LinkedIn. It's too bad because it's a great idea. So again, if you're having problems seeing the video or anything, just refresh your screen and you should see the video. So then next is the, there's the salaries. Look up. So if you're in a big company, you can search for people. So if you work for IBM, it's basically like an internal directory for your company. So you can, you know, you can look up other people that work at IBM with you. So it's only good if you have, you know, a lot of employees. And SlideShare, great place to post your content. It used to be just PowerPoint presentations, but now you can put videos up there. And you can get quite a good response from this. And what happens is SlideShare is owned by LinkedIn now. So you can post this content directly in your profiles which is really cool. So it's like thousands of presentations here. This one was one month ago and he's got 99, almost 10, 100,000 views. So what the key is, what I've ever posted, it's all about your image for your screen. So here you've got, you know, it's just a little more boring. If you put in a nice compelling image, you get a lot more views. Pretty amazing how many views you can get. And it's all free. They used to have advertising on here, but they stopped doing that now. I used to do that from a software company I used to work for. We put presentations up there and run ads to it. I've got a lot of people downloading the information. So if you have any questions, go ahead and type them in the chat window. Anything you want to look at in your profiles too. And this, this, this is what I was saying. I have the recruiter. If I look at my inbox. I've got three inboxes now. So I've got these recruiter messages, even though I don't use a recruiter account. And then I have sales navigator messages, a separate inbox for sales navigator. Sales navigator is just a separate a completely separate application. So just keep starting conversations with people. It's, it's, that's what really works on LinkedIn. Short and sweet messages back and forth. So I highly recommend spending 30 minutes a day on LinkedIn and just reaching out to people and connect with people. Linda wants to know, can you download email addresses as members of a LinkedIn group? No, LinkedIn is making it really hard these days to get those email addresses because you used to be able to export your list. Let me show you how to do that. You can export all your contacts. And I notice more and more people, I connect with them on LinkedIn and all of a sudden they put me on their newsletter list. Personally, I don't like that approach. I try to drive people and say, let them opt into my website. Because if you forcefully just add them, they're not going it's to, it's, I don't know. I don't think it's appropriate. And a lot of people say it's fine. They, they do it. People don't complain. But I prefer to really engage with people and get them to voluntarily get on my email list. But here, what you can do, if you look at your network, And here's where it's up here in this corner in the grayed out. It almost matches the background. They almost it looks like they're trying to hide this. It's just hiding up here. And here you can select all. Here we go, export. So 
So fast file only. This gives you your connections, contacts, recommendations, messages, and profile information, but they don't give you the email address anymore. The fast file plus, if you select this one, you get an archive of all your activity on LinkedIn, and you get tons of data, like every post you've ever done, how many people liked it. It's just overwhelming. I'm not sure why they would even do that, but that's what they do. Connie wants to know, how can I find the number of second level connections? Okay. So here we go back to the search. Let's go back to home. So you have to just start a search. Let's see, say sales manager. So here, you can't just do it without a full search. So let's do this. So you have to go back to this screen and just search for everything. So basically, this says 7,444,577 results of my first and second. So to get to this point, you have to actually start at the top there and put something in the search box. Actually, let me try that. Just put nothing. Okay, so there. Looks like you can just click on the empty search box. And it gives you your first and second connections. And then uncheck the first. So I have 643,165 second level connections. So does that help, Kanye? That's the power of growing your network. So let me show you on this other account. So here's Dieter's account, my brother-in-law. I just use this as a test account. So I'll do the same thing here. He has 20 connections. So there he's got 23,456 total. So the 20 person network, he's got 23,000 second level connections. So growing your network, it's, I think it's important to grow your network. I kept my network pretty small for a long time, but now I just grow. I, I accept almost all invitations if they look like an appropriate profile because it's maybe not who they know. It's friends of their friends or people, their second and third level connections. Because when you, let's look at like Jenna. So I'm going to view her profile, I'll show you why this is important. So I'm not connected with her, but people also view, this is where most of your profile views come from over here on the side. LinkedIn used to give us these stats on when people clicked and viewed your profile, they told us exactly how they found us, but they took that away a couple of years ago. But here, these are people LinkedIn is associated with Jenna, based on who's in her network. She's got over 500 people. But you'll show up in sidebars of everyone you're connected with eventually. And when you join groups too, so that's another factor. So if you join real estate groups, you're going to start showing up in the sidebar of real estate people, if that's your target market or if you're a realtor. So it's, the LinkedIn algorithm is very powerful. You know, connecting with a lot of people is not a bad thing. 99% of the people you connect with, you'll never hear from again unless you reach out to them. So Joey says, in your request to connect, do you send them a link? No, what I do, Connie, so let's go back to that. Or Doreen, sorry. 
So let's say. I'll just look at somebody's profile. So I'll look at Jenna's again. So you can connect with her right here. I can just click on this connect button, but that's going to send the standard LinkedIn message invitation. And I find if I take a moment to customize it and let her know why I want to connect with her, then at least 60% of the time, He'll accept it. Or other times, you may have some pending invitations. People won't connect with you. They just, if they don't know you, I've had people actually reach out to me and say, have we met in person? Have I shaken your hand? I said, no. Says, well, I only connect with people that I've shaken their hand, which is okay. That's his approach. But here, you just send a standard message. I prefer you click on their profile. And then here, you can click on connect. And then I'll ask you if you want to customize the message or not. So here, they've added this. This is one of the new features. So you can add a note. Or you can just send the custom invitation. So I highly recommend customizing it. And then follow up with a custom welcome message when they do accept. Let me show you the message I send, and I see if I've sent it. So here we go. Ray said something interesting. Here's the message I send. Basically, very soft. I mean, it's not a hard sell. It's just thanks for connecting. If anyone you want to meet, I'll introduce you. Just for fun, tell me something just about you or your business. Want to learn something interesting about me and my business? Visit my LinkedIn friends page. Thanks again for connecting. Put my contact information. And then here's a free LinkedIn class, a one hour video. How I generate five to 10 sales calls every week. And I get a lot of opt ins from that. So here Ray has responded with something interesting about himself. Want something about me? Here's that taste. And I say, darn good one. <laughs> so he sent me you know, this response. So it started a conversation. Now I can read something here and reach out to Ray. Read for, you know, I'll respond to this. Then we'll start a conversation. And if it, over time, we'll build a relationship. He may refer someone to me. I may refer someone to him. We may do business together. You never know. But short little conversations, like pinging people periodically, just works really, really well. So Connie wants to know, when you got your blank search results for first and second connections, your total was about 7 million. When you excluded your first level, your menu was less than 1 million. This is clearly wrong. In the past, you got the right number. By doing a blank search. Yeah, I'll do that again. So what Connie's saying is you do a blank search up here. And I have 7,444,000. So in theory, if I took my first level, which is about 11,000, I should have. Yeah, I'm all the way down to 643,000. That might be factoring in the groups. They used to have groups here. So that's gone. They used to have first, second, third, and then people, members of groups. So that could be a first, second, or a third. So yeah, Connie, that looks like it's a bug because if my first level connections are 11,000 and the second level, so I think they do is, let's try this. So does everybody understand the first level, second level, third level concept? First level is we've accepted invitations, we're connected. Second level is everybody in my first level network, their network, their first level network. And then third level is their second level network. 
This is interesting, Connie. This is definitely a bug. Because if I look at first, second, and third, I should have that 7 million. So they're not displaying that properly. Now I know what you've been talking about. <laughs> Let's go back here. So there are lots of little things that are still working out. So there are 11,436 first level connections. But when I did the blank search, there we go, 7 million four hundred first and second. So yeah, it looks like they got some bugs there. Does anybody else have any questions? I'm going to see anything else. So this is just literally evolving. And I know a lot of you were in my linked accelerator class. And we finished the sessions at the end of the year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add four more sessions to the course that we guys were in. And we're going to just dig deep into this and really fine tune your profiles show you how the other groups work now and what the LinkedIn mobile is a big factor. I just saw something over 65% of LinkedIn traffic is now on mobile. So we need to really leverage the mobile apps too. So I'm going to you know, talk about that in these sessions. So if you're interested, I'm going to do four more sessions. And if you want to join the linked accelerator, if you're already a member, you get this for free. But if you want, if you just go to linkedaccelerator.com, you can get a $1 trial, 14-day trial, and you, you'll be in the first two sessions of these four. And if you want to continue, it's just $297. And then you get access to Linked Accelerator, all these updates. I'm always updating the videos. We have a Facebook group. We've got tons of content in there. And it's just so much information is changing. So that's why we just get on sessions like this and walk through it. And we work on people's profiles on calls and really just help them write messages and reach out to people and connect. So it's kind of look over your shoulder and we work on yours. So if you're interested in joining us, just go to linkedaccelerator.com. You can sign up. And it's $1 for 14 days. You can see all the course modules. There's eight course modules and bonus modules, and lots of Q&A calls. We did 13 Q&A calls in the last session, and we'll be adding to that every month. I do one to two calls a month now with this kind of information. So anybody have any other questions? I think that's it. So thanks, everybody, for attending. Sorry for the little technical glitch. It's better than the last one. Webinar challenges lately, but we'll get them worked out. So again, if you want to join us, go to linkedaccelerator.com and sign up. Dollar, fourteen day trial. What do you got to lose? A dollar. So, well, thanks everybody, and the webinar replay will be sent to you automatically from the system. If you have any questions, just reach out to me at ted at tedpadromo.com. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs>